Hi, everyone. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, welcome to Stories of Victory Over Adversity. I'm here again this week with um, Hugh Garfield Cato, um, and we're discussing, uh, well, a certain category of taking care of parents, of parenting our parents. Um, and I believe it's probably one of the most important aspects of caring for your parents. Um, we're going to be talking over the next little while about caring for yourself as you care for your parents. Um, when we ended last week, we talked a little bit um, just about the impact of, of you know, doing this um, working with your parents and such. And over the course of the week, we've gotten a number of comments and messages. And um, thank you so much, everybody, for um, sharing, sharing your heart, sharing your interests. Um, and then those private messages, thank you for voicing your concerns. And uh, so out of the bulk of those things, we're sort of landing on this caring for your parents and why it's so important. Um, so, uh, this is Hugh. <laughs> Say hi, hi. Hugh. Hi. <laughs> <Y'all see? laughs> I know who I am. And I'm Kimberly Cato. And again, this is um, Stories of Victory Over Adversity. And if you like what you hear, um, please be sure to comment, um, ring the bell, and subscribe so that you can be notified when we upload new episodes um, in this series as well as our Wednesday series. So be sure to ring the bell. Um, but for now, I thought we'd start, Huey, with a question to you about what you when you learned or did you learn um or wait what was the impact of parent caring for your parents on you in terms of caring for yourself well um as i mentioned last week one of the biggest the biggest impact probably was the fact that i had to suppress emotions uh so yeah so at the, at the end I, and i know i know that i did it i mean i I'm pretty sure I knew I do it while I knew, knew I did it while I was doing it, uh, but I didn't realize the impact it had on me until recently, yeah. basically last week. So, but um, it was something that 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 well, I, I would say is near to dear to my heart because I spent uh, majority of my life uh, from when I got married, had kids. My attitude had always been make sure that I look after myself. So I work on an assembly line and uh, probably around 25 years old, I got a desk job and put on about 30 pounds in a matter of two months. So I joined a gym because I couldn't be that athlete that I say that I am with that fat on me. So I am, um, then I, I started working on an assembly line and, and uh, shortly like and later on in life. And I, did, I started late. So, I mean, I think I was, I was, I was over 30 when I started working on an assembly line. Uh, and in doing so, that, that, that kind of work, it, it wreaks havoc with your body. Mm-hmm. So, having joined the gym and been a part of the gym lifestyle to some degree, at this point now, just aches and pains, I, I, I thought, you know what, I, that was the one thing that was always prevalent in my mind was the idea that, that I have to, people would ask me, you know, you're going to gym, go to gym. And, I, and it wasn't because I wanted to be fit. Or it wasn't because I wanted, for sure, when I started, it was because I couldn't play soccer if, with the weight I had on me. But, uh, but at this point now, it became more about being able to, to manage my day-to-day aches and pains as a result of the work that I'm doing. So, so I spent, you know, I think it was, um, mom and dad got ill probably 10 years into my career on the similar line. Um, and I spent a lot of time, in that time, I was going to the gym on the regular 
to make sure I could do that job. Yeah. Mom and dad came around, that stuff. And I still, I still did my sports. I still did all those things that I did. Yeah. Uh, but I probably did it with a little less zeal and enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, t- instead of taking a couple of days off, it would turn into three months. Mm-hmm. Um, I pl- still played my sports. Uh, and uh, But what I can say is that, uh, again, hindsight, uh, that participation started to taper off later on. Mm-hmm. So that I can, so here I am now, looking forward to playing soccer again next year, mm-hmm. and that's the first time I felt I've been looking forward to playing again, easily in about five years. Mm-hmm. So, uh, although although I did do things to try and make sure I looked after myself, yeah, while mom, while I was looking after mom and dad. I can say that that I and I know that I didn't do it with the same level of of dedication yeah. and, and discipline that I had prior to that, because mom yeah. and dad again we talk about the life and, and going on autopilot. I want an auto, autopilot as a job. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So it's in hindsight that you can see um, the impact and some of it. And and that's the interesting thing. We, we often think that we will fall into a place where uh, we recognize um, we recognize the impact of things on us in the moment, but we really do not. Um, that, that goes that autopilot, let's face it. Yeah. Right? You think, you think you know, but you don't. As you step further and further and further away from the actual incident in time, you can mark different changes in your behavior, changes in your attitude, changes in you that you wouldn't necessarily be able to mark them um, at the time. I know, for example, for me, my I had a pivotal moment in the process of caring for mom and dad when I um, I knew I needed to make like immediate changes. And, and my moment was probably a good, uh, good long while into caring for them and living there. And, and we were going through that period in which mom was not sleeping at all. And which meant of course, that I couldn't sleep. And um, finally, we were coming up to another one of the um, psychiatrist appointments um, with mom. And of course, um, I took mom and dad to the appointment. And my, my uh, determination upon getting to that, appo- that appointment was to talk about, listen, something needs to happen. You, you need to give her a pill of some sort. This baby needs to sleep because I need to sleep. We all need to sleep. <laughs> and, um, I can remember going in to the room with mom and dad, and then I'm sitting in the middle, and and the doctor's on the other side of the table, and I keep saying, uh, yeah, she doesn't sleep. And, and he kept saying to me, yeah, but how are you doing? Are you okay? And I'm like, what? what? Listen, mom needs to sleep. Like we need to, you know, she doesn't sleep. She doesn't, mom needs to sleep. And he kept asking, but you're okay? And, and how are things with you? And I'm like, listen, man, get a clue, whatever. So eventually he does, he listens to both mom, myself, and then subsequently dad and writes a prescription and, and you know, off we go. <laughs> off we go. And I dropped mom and dad at the day program and I went back to the house. And when I kicked off my shoes, I noticed <laughs> that I was wearing um, the, I had two pair, a black and a blue pair of shoes. And I was wearing, the left foot was the black pair and the right foot was the blue pair. And then my shirt <laughs> was not only inside out it was backwards so right <laughs> at the front is the big ass label and yeah. i'm like okay <laughs> and, and the hair is disheveled and the whole business and so i'm like okay clearly 
um, Problem. something wrong with this. And, um, and that's when I was like, okay, now I need to, I need to actually do something for me because this isn't, this isn't okay. Exactly. And that's when we implemented, you know, you coming to this right. Thursdays. I made some other changes. Like I made sure um, to go to church on Tuesdays. I would go and I would teach this alpha program at my, my church. And it was just a way to, to step out and do something else. Um, and then I also, there were a number of different things that I implemented to take care of me. Um, and truthfully, once that happens, things, everything changed, really. Um, everything changed. Yeah. Do you remember that? Well, I remember something causing me to have to come over and spend the nights. <laughs> yeah. Now, now that you're talking about it, Anne, yeah, I remember. I, I don't remember that specifically. Yeah. But it's not like we decided right from the start that, okay, hey, let's, I'm going to come over and spend nights. It was something that, that, that caused this. Like, we have, to, we have to talk. Yeah, yeah. And so I was, okay, cool. This, so that was our solution. That was, and that was, I guess, to take care of you. So yeah. Okay. And, you know, when you think about it, it makes perfect sense because even when you're flying, not that I do this often, um, but even when you fly and they're telling you about the equipment and so on and so forth, they tell you, even as a mother, if we are in difficulty or whatever, the oxygen mass will drop down. You yeah. make sure to take the oxygen first before, before. you give it to your child. Or, and, before you go to, or even if you see somebody in need, Make yeah. sure you're okay before you help them. Look, me, child, whatever. So somebody is in, in trouble. You exactly. Look after you before you try looking after you, them. If you're a lifeguard, you, you make sure you're on solid ground before you go to the drowning person. Or yeah. you, you secure yeah. yourself before you extend your hand. Because you can only help from a point of strength. And, and I know in church we talk a lot about, um, you know, feeding others from our overflow. It's not from, um, you know, your cup, your cup half or full or half empty or half full. It, you got to fill your own cup so that you're not depleted. You're actually feeding and serving from your point of strength. And, and this was a real good lesson for me to, to note that I need, I could do better in caring for them if I'm caring for myself as well. Yeah. Well, I just, I'll say this because yeah. like I said, I, it, 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 if you're in it long term, now in hindsight, you really need to revisit over a period of time. Now, if I, looking at it again, hindsight, looking it over, I think I would look at every five years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and have and and have a, like give yourself a true a real assessment. Am I looking after myself? Yeah. Right. I, so you have to revisit it. You have to look at it and, and yeah. make sure you are looking after yourself and doing all the things you should be doing or have been doing. If you're not doing it with the same intensity, then for me, then you know what? At that point, ask for help. Yeah, absolutely. That's also when when Tracy um, would come every. That's when we implemented Tracy. Every, um, I think it was every three or every three weeks or so, she would come yeah. and stay the weekend, mm -hmm. um, and that was the other break for me too. Yeah, we we ch we made changes. We yeah. made changes, and and I know, even in re listening to, um, and watching your current recognition of the things that you did and things that you do to care for yourself while we were caring for mom and dad. I think the fact that you were able to continue with the, the physical exercise, though, you know, it is split. Regardless of what you do, but still doing it. You're still doing it. And, yeah. and implementing and maintaining normalcy so that you could step into this new role was very important. Yeah. Um, I think for a sound bite, um, that's the biggest part of the message for 
this episode is, is if you are caring for somebody that you love, make sure you're doing it from a position of strength. Implement things around you that, that will enable you to care for yourself. Recognize that you can't continuously give um, without depleting yourself. So make sure to implement things that actually feed you so that you can better feed others. Um, and we promised that we were going to talk about the process of, of um, engaging with long-term care or outside supports. And, and Hugh, I know you did the research on that. So did you wanna touch on what you had explored? Well, it's the, uh, in Ontario, uh, it's the, I'm just looking at it here on the screen here. Yeah. Uh, local Health Integration Network. So if you're uh, somebody who has senior or anybody, uh, or you're looking after somebody who has, is, has a need, uh, you call, we talked about the CCAC, that was the organization that, that looked after us at the time. But yeah. this day, this now, it's the uh, Local Health Integration Network. Um, you give them a call, number is 310-222-2222-2222. And no 905, you dial that number and it'll bring you to probably your region. Uh, if you choose to look for it online, you, enter, you, you go to the, the website and you enter your postal code. And then you'll be matched with a caseworker. Uh, they will sit down and, and do their assessment. And specifically, it really kind of looks at, um, they, they determine what, what activities and services are available to you in the community. And uh, after their assessment, they, they do an assessment with respect to uh, whether you need, uh, or whether you qualify for subsidy from government-sponsored programs. Uh, once they determine that, then they set you up with these specific organizations. And if you want, and then if you're private, then they're private facilities or private um, services available. Uh, but those you'll have to contact yourself. Okay. Oh, and pay yourself and all that too. Yeah. 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 So that's good. So, um, the point is then, of course, if I'm in Ontario, it's 310-2222, um, and they'll hook you up through the LIN, the Local Health Integration Network. Um, and if you're outside of Ontario, uh, you know, the now this day and age, our best tool is Google. Really do a good search of what resources are in your area. And, and um, I'm sh it, it'll come up. I would start with your government office, your government agency, and just plug in a question and, and see what comes out. Um, we'll be sure to put in the links below the information for the LIN, for the Local Health Integration Network, um, for Ontario specific. Um, but outside of Ontario, do a Google search, and I'm sure you'll find the answer should you need help. Um, did you have anything else that you wanted to add, Huey? Mm, aside from, that's vital that you look after yourself. Yeah. And, and pay, again, pay attention. Right, so this is all coming to you, hindsight. Uh, and And hindsight, being aware of, where I was at. So if I were to look, think about what was going on then, I think I would have taken some courses in self-awareness. Oh. So I could be, I could be aware of what's happening to me in the, in real time, as opposed to fixing issues now. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That's good. Um, and for me, yeah. Feed from your strength. Give, you know, give but don't be depleted. Take care of yourself. Remain strong and love those that you do care for. And um, one of those people never forgets. One of those people you're supposed to be caring for is yourself. On that note, um, that's all for today. 
Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for subscribing, for ringing the bell. Uh, we upload new episodes every Sunday and every Wednesday. They differ, <laughs> um, but um, they're all fabulous. So I look forward to hearing from you in your comments below. And if you have questions, again, message, private message, or send in the comments. Um, our contact information is below. And uh, thank you so much for stopping by and giving us the opportunity for a little of what we went through out and to help all of you. And, and honestly, every one of your comments we've read and they've moved us. And, and so I thank you greatly. We thank you greatly for them. Thanks a lot. Have a very good evening. Have a good one. See you again. Bye now.